Today I have a guest in the fly bar to tie one on. He's one of the OGs from the way, way back. Joel Hayes. And this is one of the first patterns I ever learned how to tie. And he taught it to me. This fly works on just about every fish that swims in Texas. Seriously, seriously, it does. But it is really aimed at sunfish and smaller species. It does from time to time grab a bass. And the huge carp we have here just won't resist it when the time is right. I wanted to get Joel in because I had forgotten this pattern over time. And more importantly, I wanted to remember what the original formula is. So I thought there would be nothing better than a video so that we can go back to it anytime to refresh our memories of the components and how this fly is tied. I'm taking this from two angles, and you will notice that there are two different flies being tied, but it's the same fly with different components, but it is the same thing. So let me stop talking now, and we can get on with the show. One more thing, folks. Be sure to like and subscribe, people. So, hooks in the vise. We're just going to put the thread on. And this one's going to have the extra small lead eye for a little bit fast sinker. And then one thing we're going to do is put the lead eye on just a little bit further, maybe a millimeter or two further back down the hook shank than you normally would if you were tying a typical nymph or saltwater pattern. And there's a there's a reason for that that we'll we'll get to here in a in a bit. I'm just going to put the put our lead eyes in. Make sure they're good and tight, so they don't rotate around. Then we're going to bring the thread back almost to the hook point, um, just because I want to leave a little bit of that hook exposed if we're using this as a bluegill fly or whatever to be able to get the hook out of a little bitty mouth. And here we're going to take some silly legs. This is the uh, olive and black sparkle. And I'm going to take this silly leg and I'm going to cut it into thirds. It doesn't have to be exact because at the end of the day it's a cart bluegill fly. We'll see how close we get to thirds here. Alright, so there's our there's our legs. One of them's always going to be a little shorter or longer than the others, and that one will be the end up being the tail. My tail, I'm going to take that piece of silly leg, just pinch it in half, and I'm going to tie it right in here on top of the shank with just a little bit of the loop of it at the end. And just a couple of wraps. And that should be enough for it to flare out like a tail. And next I'm going to put in, you don't have to use copper wire. Um, I started using copper wire on this fly when I when I used just peacock curl for the body because um, it helped keep the fly together after it got chewed on a little bit. Uh, adds a little bit of weight and some segmentation maybe and maybe a little bit of strength but I'm just used to using it so I keep using it. And we're going to put in some uh, eye stub peacock for the body. It doesn't have to be much because of you know, a hexagenia nymph or a damselfly nymph, whatever this thing is representing, does not have a really thick body. But this just adds a nice buggy looking flash and width to our body. Now we're just going to wrap in this body.
there we go. And there's our body. Um, went clockwise on the body, so I'm going to come back counterclockwise with the copper wire and just kind of hold that body material in and give us a little segmentation. And tie off our wire. There's my wire. All right, we're halfway done. Now we get our legs. And we'll just take a leg and put it in right underneath the eye. And we're going to tie it in right behind the eye. So right in the middle. A couple wraps. Hold that one in place. I'll do the other one on the other side. wraps. Try to get it back out here. There you go. And a couple wraps. Hold those guys in place. They don't have to be perfect right now because the hackle is actually going to hold them into place. But there's our there's our rubber legs. We're gonna take a piece of hackle, and this is a pretty webby hackle. This is a little bit longer. We can work better with this one. Um, pretty webby. You know, same hackle you'd use for a woolly bugger or whatever. Uh, I don't need the stout stuff at the end. I'm really going after this webby stuff in the middle. So I'm gonna tie this in pretty far down here, further down than you would normally tie in a piece of hackle, because we're only going to use uh, two or three wraps of the hackle. And I'm going to tie this in right on top of the eye for now, and just one or two wraps to lock it in behind the eye, keep my legs straight, and I'm going to bring my thread forward in front of the eye now. Just like that, keep my legs out of the way. I'm going to drop that hackle down and just do a wrap on it in front of the eye. And doing nothing more than just really making sure that hackle is tight. Because nothing's worth than tying this whole fly and then having your tackle pull out on the second cast. There. Hackle's tight. Hackle's not going anywhere. Two wraps. I'm just going to pull it up, cut it off, make sure I don't cut off the leg. Not clean up any of these little hackle pieces that are sticking out. There we go. Now I'm just going to take the hackle and make sure my legs are sticking out where my legs should be sticking out. There's my leg. And I'm just going to do a wrap with this hackle, whichever way it's going to bend backwards. And I'm going to do a wrap between the legs, just like that. Right, between my legs, my legs are sticking out good. And I'm going to bring it forward, pull my legs back, and I bring that feather forward. And I'm going to do a couple wraps up here. Really just one, and then tie it off. Pull that hackle down and tie it off up front. you got to kind of move your legs around, make sure you get that thread where you want it and you're not locking your legs down accidentally. There we go. And 
and a couple more wraps just to make sure that hackle is locked down. There we go. We'll trim off the hackle, clean up our eye a little bit. Go. Pull everything back. Just again, make sure everything's clean. And wrap it up. And as I wrap it up, building that head back, I'm pushing that hackle back so it curves back against the eyes and pushes those legs back where the legs need to be. And then once, once that head is where we need it, everything's pushed back like that. We'll just whip finish it off. Without folding the legs into the whip finish. There we go. Clean off the eye a little bit. There you go. That's it. That is the the Hexy Damsel. And the reason we put that eye back and then the way we wrapped it and came forward of the eyes and did a couple of wraps. Um, one thing in the early versions of the fly, we always found that the you know the bead chain eye was catching grass, little pieces of slime, whatever. And this wrapping this hackle, just a couple of wraps in front of those eyes, does an amazing job of keep, keeping stuff from catching on those eyes. Adds a little bit of bugginess. Uh, here at the end, we'll trim off the top hackle, just so it'll ride a little bit better when it hits the bottom. But that's it.